Hello, this is Vesu from Chaos. In this tutorial, we are going to take a look at how we can create a snowy scene and a snow shader. We'll also look at shaping the ground to look like it's covered with snow. First, we'll start by modifying the ground geometry in a way that looks like it has actual snow covering it. After that, we'll create a snow shader, which we can eventually use on all of the objects covered with snow in the scene. With all that being said, let's get started. Here in 3ds Max, we have a scene to work with. We have a few houses and the main characters in the foreground, but mainly the environment is made of hills, which we need to make appear snowy. The first thing we need to do before we get to the shading part is to add more details in the geometry on the ground. I'll go ahead and hide the little boy and the sleigh from the foreground so we can focus our attention on the ground. The geometry is fairly simple, just a hill with an indented path coming towards the camera. We can add a little bit of noise to make the surface not so uniform and to make it look more like snow. But before we do that, we need to mask off the pathway part of the surface because in that area we need to make it look like rough snow. Maybe people, vehicles, animals and whatnot have been walking through the snow. I've already masked off the pathway using the vertex paint modifier in 3ds Max. I simply painted the actual path using the brush tool in white and made sure the channel section was set to map channel. This way I can reference this mask later on when I do the shading. We'll get to that part in a little bit. So now we can add a little bit of large surface detail to establish the general shape of our hill here. Let me add a turbo smooth modifier first because we'll need more polygons and a noise modifier after that. For the noise modifier, we'll need to have more polygons, that's why we can increase the Turbo Smooth subdiff iterations to let's say 3. In the noise modifier, we usually need to experiment a little bit until we get something we can work with. We can start by adding some strength in all X, Y and Z directions. We can also increase the size quite a bit because the default value of 100 is just not appropriate. As you can see, this way we can easily achieve a fluffy type of ground, which looks like a fresh snowfall. We can also add even more detail by enabling the fractal noise checkbox. At this point, I'll increase the size even further to make it look more subtle. Very well, let's start the interactive rendering so we can take a look at the result. Not bad, this is going to be our main shape of the hill. For the final image, we will use a night lighting setup but to see better while we are working on the ground geometry, I have temporarily set it to daytime lighting. Now we can add the rough snow only in the pathway area. To achieve that, we can use displacement. Let's add a V-Ray displacement modifier to the stack. Nothing changes so far because we need to add a texture to be displaced. We can combine multiple noise textures together to achieve a more interesting result. Let's start by creating a composite map. As you can notice, the whole surface shifted downwards. I'll add a V-Ray color node with a value of 50% gray. This way we can establish a mid-level for the displacement to start from. Next, I'll create another layer and plug in another composite map into it. We can use the composite map to mix several noise textures. You can create your noise textures using the noise node within 3ds Max and play with the settings or you can use some external noise textures files. I have several noise textures that would work nicely. This is a cloud looking type of noise. It is a little big so let me plug in a V-Ray UVW randomizer node to adjust the tiling. I'll set the tiling a little higher to the value of 7 for both U and V directions. I will also enable stochastic tiling, so there will be no visible repetitive pattern. I can also add a little randomization to the scaling, ranging from let's say 80% to 100. Nice! Now let's mask off the hill left and right of the pathway using the vertex paint mask I've showed you earlier. I'll create a vertex color node Make sure its map channel matches the one we set for the vertex paint node and plug it into the layer 2 mask slot. Right away you can notice that the displacement is now applied only to the pathway. Let's add a second layer to our composite map. 
I will use another V-Ray bitmap node with another noise map loaded into it. This one has a little more high frequency detail. Currently there isn't much happening because the texture map is too big. Let me add a V-Ray UVW randomizer node again and tile the texture quite a bit. Again, I'll turn on the stochastic tiling and add little variation in the scaling parameter. Now the second layer in our composite map has completely overridden the first one. What we want is to have the first layer and add the details from the second layer on top of it. This is easily done by switching the blending mode from normal to addition. Great! Now it starts to look more like it has been walked on a pathway over the snow cover. Let's go ahead and add one more layer of detail. Once again in the composite map, I'll create a new layer and plug in one of the V-Ray bitmap nodes containing another noise texture. Again, the texture needs to be tiled several times. I'll bring in a V-Ray UVW randomizer node and tile the texture like 5 times. Same as before, I'll use the stochastic tiling option and randomize the scale size. This noise texture creates an interesting effect. However, I don't want it all over the place, but instead only have it in certain places. I've used the noise node to create a rather contrasting noise map, which I'll use as a mask. Let me go ahead and plug it into the layer 3 mask slot. Great! Just by combining several noise maps, we've managed to create an interesting displacement effect on the pathway. There are a few artifacts that I noticed in the very front. We can try to get rid of those by going to our first composite node and reduce the opacity of our main layer so it can blend with the 50% grey color that we've used as our base. That certainly helped. Now we can finally build the shader for the snow. But before we do that, let me switch to the nighttime lighting setup. As I mentioned earlier, that will be the lighting for the final render. I can easily switch between the daytime and nighttime lighting using the light lister tool and switch between the dawn lights for the day and night. Good. The sky is still a little brighter and that is mainly because of the atmosphere scattering too much light. We can adjust that by opening the environment and effects window. Then we can choose V-Ray aerial perspective and reduce the in scattered light intensity to let's say a value of 1. This way will reduce the overall light intensity of the atmosphere fog, which would make it less bright. Alright, currently all of the snow geometry objects have a standard V-Ray material applied. It is almost pure white, which already makes it appear like snow. But snow should have somewhat of a softer look and feel. Snow is also a translucent material, so we need to account for that as well. First, we will need a material that can handle subsurface scattering. We can use the V-Ray Fast SSS material. So let me create one and assign it. Let's start tweaking the material until it looks more like snow. First thing I noticed is that the shader is very reflective, very shiny. Usually snow is relatively matte looking in terms of specularity. So under the specular layer, let me darken the specular color. Also, I have created a simple texture map to control the glossiness parameter. It's just a bunch of random dots, which would give our snow shader a relatively dull reflection overall, with some sparkling dots here and there. We could also disable the trace reflections option as an optimization in this particular case, since it doesn't really make much of a difference. Great! I also have a normal map here, which would make the fine detail on the surface. I'll plug it into the bump map slot and set its value to 100. Now let's adjust the subsurface scattering settings. The first thing to adjust is the scattering radius. I'll increase it significantly, even exaggerate it so we can see better while we are setting up the material. You can notice right away the material became a little softer looking. Next, let's set the subsurface color and the scatter color. The subsurface color specifies the general color for the subsurface layer of the material. We can use a very light blue color almost white. Great, our shader looks more and more like snow. Now let's set the scatter color, which specifies the internal scattering color for the material that is visible in the thin backlit parts of the object. We can go for a more saturated shade of blue here. 
which would make it look like there is some ice in the thin part. Finally, we can tone down the scatter radius to let's say 50 cm. Alright, with several easy adjustments we've managed to create a decent snow shader. Let me unhide the boy character and render out the final image. In this video, we went over the process of creating a snow environment and a snow shader. We started with building the ground geometry using displacement and a combination of different noise textures. After that, we proceeded to setting up a subsurface scattering shader and adjusting it to look like snow. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful and helpful. Thank you for watching.